Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and this is part two of the video on making the uh, spindle nose protector in the drawbar for the Craftsman Atlas Slade. Uh, and I, I read here recently some statistics. Uh, I'm always reading stuff on, uh, on the internet but it seems the US government estimates that uh, currently the medical profession accidentally kills about 250,000 people a year. And uh, I know that's a big number, and people people normally have a, a hard time dealing with big numbers or comprehending them. Uh, it's not sure as to whether Joseph Stalin said it or not, but it sure sounds like him. He said, uh, "If one man, the death of one man is a tragedy. The death of a million is a statistic." And that pretty much fits the way people do. In uh, in a study that I read about these people. Uh, were divided into two groups, and the first group was told that uh, this this big business maggot, you know, had uh, defrauded three people of a, a ton of money, and uh, wanted them to set what his punishment should be. So they picked out 4.88 years as the average punishment. And then they went to the second group and told them it was 10 times as many people that the guy had uh, cheated out of their money, and their average punishment for him was 3.8 years. So. Undoubtedly, the bigger the number, the less weight we can properly put on, you know, the situation. Uh, I guess that's why that uh, you can have 250,000 medical fatalities a year by, you know, from accident, and uh, and nobody gets all stirred up about it. <laughs> they don't seem to care anyway. I, I imagine if you was one of the 250,000, you'd care quite a lot, but uh, you know, or. Or, you know, anyway, we don't want to cast a pall on the video with statistics and, and things like that, so let's get on with the video. So I'll have something, you know, some kind of grip for when I want to take the thing on or off. Because to take it off of the spindle, to come over here, I had to use a strap wrench. And uh, that would be kind of, you know, annoying. You have to do that every time, although I won't be. It probably won't get stuck on there that tight, but I'm going to have a little grip knot grooves from about near halfway out to the outside surface. And that's because I can't get any closer to it. This uh, spindle is going to hit the rotary table, and I'm going to, so I can't get any closer than that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make 12 little grooves there. And uh, the reason I chose 12 is because it divides into 360 so nicely, 30 times. I can add 30, 60, 90, and so on. Even a redneck can probably add those numbers together. I'm not guaranteeing you anything, but probably. How's that? And we'll just, this is an experiment here this time on the depth. It doesn't matter how, how fast the spindle is turning or too much about the depth of the cut either. I think I'll go down just a tiny bit more, not a lot. I was watching Mr. Pete the other day, and I know I shouldn't say it, but he he fed his melon cutter into his into his collet because I think he quit watching the DRO and started watching what he was cutting, and so he had like six little grooves cut in his collet. I got into that same kind of trouble the other day when I was making the uh, little battery holder for the ATNX site. I uh, started trying to look at the cutter instead of watching the DRO, and it got me in trouble. All right, that looks like a perfect sized groove, and the reason it looks that way is I'm afraid I shouldn't go any deeper. So we'll rotate this guy around 30 degrees. And 
then we'll come back in and make another cut. I'm actually, I'm going to keep my eye on the DRO. I'm not going to look at the rotary table. But I've already been there. Got myself in trouble for it. Alright, now we need to go to 60. So you guys get the, uh, get the idea. I'm going to let you go back to sleep. You guys have probably had plenty of nap though because when I let y'all go to bed for the night I actually let you have two days of nap before I come to wake you up again. Use this ball nose end mill to cut the grooves and they look to me like they're plenty close enough together and there's plenty of them and I think I should be getting good enough of grip from that. So there you are, the nuts finished the next job that we've got to do of course is uh, to make a little uh, rod to hold our junk together uh, to hold our dead burn it our collet vice chuck our collet chuck in the uh, spindle so we'll get on with that here in just a second okay so now we're going to make a, a draw bar to hold this guy in because we all know the marsh taper is not really all that wonderful at holding things tight. Uh, and if a strange thing I have noticed here lately, right at first months ago when I thought I first started noticing it, I was sure that I heard people calling it a Morris taper, like M-O-R-R-I-S, when it's really a marsh taper, M-O-R-S-E. And my ears aren't all that good and I've misunderstood a lot of things I heard. But finally, the other day, I was absolutely certain that I was hearing that right, that there were a bunch of people calling it a Morris taper. So, heh, you know how that goes. I don't know how that's crept in to the language, but things like that always do. All right, when I went... I, one decided I wanted a piece of shiny rod to do this with, and I thought, well, why not check, see how much it costs for a piece of a three foot stainless steel, all three, you know, half, 13. And I looked it up on various and sundry places, and the lowest price was uh, Home Depot. So I thought, well, by golly, that's where we'll buy the thing. But I didn't want to go down there and look through the whole store for that thing. Then, you know, redneck and lazy I thought I'll order it online and I'll pick it up at their desk so I did and the next day I went down to get it and they whipped the little rod up on the counter there and take my paper and start to enter things in their computer you know and I thought you know the guy that went to get that rod and bring it up the front probably doesn't really care whether he got the right thing or not so I picked it up and looked and sure enough it said uh, zinc coated steel well, that's less than half the cost of the stainless steel, you know. So I pointed that out to the lady, and so she disappeared back there to find it with that beautiful piece of uh, shiny, really shiny piece of zinc-coated steel and come back and let me know that they were out. They really didn't have 11 in stock. So uh, I went back to the back and said, well, I'll take zinc-coated stainless, uh, zinc-coated steel. And I got to look around. I never could find that really pretty shiny one that she went back there with. But I did get one. So now instead of stainless, we're just working with regular old zinc coated steel. That makes sense? All right. All right. Here we go. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to measure off a spot for a little, a little spacer to keep, uh, to keep it straight. And room for two nuts. And I'm going to mark it and then we'll take it to the bandsaw. Alright, I got the compound turned around so I'm on about a 30 degree angle. That may be too steep, I don't know. But I need an angle on the end of this thing and I'm going to start with that and see how it works out. So let's just, let's give it a try and see what happens. Thank you. 
And all I need to do is just drill a hole in it and part it off. Alright, I probably got the end of it a little bit sharp, so it'll have thin edge on the outward end when I go in with this, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just dress it off a little bit where it looks right again. I'm going to make a half inch hole because that's what size the uh, drawbar is going to be, half inch. boost push tool there. I made that for something. This is it. I can probably straighten this thing back up and cut the wobble out. There's a little scratch on it, but what hey. back to parting off. Took me a while to find that thing. It was right under my nose, actually. <clears throat> Alright. Maybe this time I'll go in a little more careful. So there we go, we've got a draw bar, we've got this little guy uh, right here, he's got a cone shaped end so he can go up in that cone shaped hole, and pull this guy down, take a uh, wrench and tighten him down, and there you are. My collet chuck's not going to come loose. Marsh taper or not. So, there you are. We'll go and see if there's a joke. I've had several sent in with various people, and I don't remember who was which, so if you guys get mad at me, I'm sorry, you know. But we're going to go get a joke. Earl and Bubba out fishing, you know, on the boat, drinking beer. Earl Shunson put two in the back of there, you know. And after a bit, Bubba pops up and says, I think I'm going to divorce my wife. She hadn't talked to me in over two months. Earl says, back off out in the water, takes a sip of his beer. And says, I don't know, Bubba. He says, I think that overfies you. A woman like that's hard to find. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to 
subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now